Ladies and gentlemen, the first man to build 21 inch biceps, drug free. What I'm giving you is something back. I'm giving you an experience. And I can tell you something. And, and I can tell you this. There's nobody on any of these YouTube channels that approach my experience. That had hands-on personal relationship with the great lifters and champions of the past. Their lifting is, weightlifting, competitive weightlifting is, is practically dead in this country. Uh, powerlifting is what they push in a day. But let me tell you something. I get guys asking, uh, what are the best lifts for power, to build power? Now, you see, in our gym, Ed Goldberg gym in New York City, we had a separate separation, not separating with a wall, but we had a platform and everything for the lifters, competitive lifters, and the ones that were visiting and the ones that were training there and from the New York City area, where you had the platform with the wooden platform. Then the rest of the gym was for the bodybuilders. Now, I always admired the weightlifters for the skill and the athletic ability of slamming that weight overhead. And, I, I, of course, I wasn't interested in doing it myself. I just wasn't interested in powerlifting. I was just building my body. But I, we watched them because they were training with us. I mean, not doing the same exercises. Now, the exercises I watched they did was fascinating to me. The upright rowing motion, they used to do a lot of that. Get the whole, because in lifting, you have to bring it up over your head. Fast, not slowly. But you had to have power to do that. And I noticed they used to do a lot of uprights. I watched them. I noticed they did a lot of bench pressing. A lot of bench pressing, I noticed that also. And I noticed that they, they did deadlifts, but they did like a squatting deadlift. I never seen them do the standing, uh, um, you know, standing up straight and bending over. I never seen them do that. And I saw them do plenty of squats, very heavy weights. Some guys would do, most of them would do full squats. I mean, all the way down. A lot of them would do just the parallel squats where you get to a 90 degree angle and then you come up. Some would go lower than that. But I watched them and I noticed also very low reps. I never seen a weightlifter do 10 reps. I, I guess he'd have a heart attack get 10 reps. They would do as many as sets of one. Just one, boom, and then down. Boom, and then down. And you know, you know, we, I would look, the guys we were training, we'd look and like, you're fascinated. And you know something? I was built better than all of them, and I couldn't even touch the weight that they were using. And you know, if you look at them, you never dream that they could be as strong as they were without that visual look. Because they weren't interested in pumping muscles, shaping them up, they were interested in power. It was just like, and you know, you know, so when I get self from experience, it's just looking back, it's like I, I, I like I see it all, it's like a seeing a movie that I saw already. And there's so much in that computer head of mine, so much, so much experience, so much learning and developing. We had, at that time, the greatest lifters in the world were Americans. And it was promoted by Bob Hoffman, but nobody spoke. Lifting is just not visually exciting to people. They can't relate to it because lifting that kind of weight that people can't relate to. And lifters didn't have the visual uh, uh, appreciation of their skill and their strength because lifting builds tendons and ligaments, not so much muscle. It's tendons and ligaments and, and explosive power. And a lot of it is internal. Your power really comes from internally. I was always fascinated. I mean, I wasn't, uh, you know, oblivious to the guys. I was fascinated because I, I, to, to see them lift that weight, to see them do the snatch where you take 300 pounds on the floor and bring it up over your head in one motion. 
And I tell you the truth, three, I had a problem trying to deadlift 300 pounds. And I remember the great lifters at the time, the champions, uh, Pete George, Shepard, Isaac Berger, John Davis, Shemansky, uh, oh, so many, Tommy Kono, all the, the great, and all of them would come to Abe's place. Not all of them trained consistently there, but I, Berger trained there consistently. I think Shepard did. I'm not sure. And then Anderson was uh, uh, a power lifter. Uh, George Anderson, he was a huge guy. He was a power lifter. But he didn't do those, those uh, it's like the snatch. You know, you're the snatches from the floor up over your head. But the exercise, to build that kind of power. And another thing I noticed, I never seen the guys do any curls. Because I don't think curls, I, I guess I'm sure of it, don't contribute to your overall power. You don't use that muscle in the clean and jerk in the press and all that. You use your shoulders, your pieces, your back, but not your biceps. And, it, and it's just fascinating to me, my friends, as when I would look at them and, 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 and it, no, no idea if you saw them, you would never dream they could lift that kind of weight because they developed the muscle and the muscle takes repetitions, whole different aspect a whole different direction of building all together you see but the exercises that they did on a consistent basis which you know you we would do our thing but we all be with the people over there and the guys on the platforms doing their thing all of us sort of semi envious because they were so much stronger than we were yet they what what happened our envy is because they didn't know <laughs> as they didn't have the visual look that we had, you see. But the point is, the exercises that they did on a consistent basis for power was the upright rowing, um, squats, bench press. Yeah, upright rowing, because we're trying to remember, because, you know, I, I wasn't a lifter. But I remember the lift that these guys did, and I know they did this. The upright, they used to do a lot of the upright rowing, I guess because of the way they had to throw the weight over the head. But um, the squats, they did a lot of that, which I watched, with, uh, you know. And they would press, pressing, they did a lot of pressing, standing pressing. But that was eliminated from the Olympics because they bent over too far. It wasn't, they couldn't control the motion of standing press. So the pressing press was really eliminated in the Olympics. The clean and jerk and the snatch was the main exercises. I mean, ex the, the, the lifts that they, that they used to judge you. They took the standing military press out. But this was something, these, if you want power, and, and in conjunction with your regular training, then concentrate on those four exercises. They're the real power builders. So my friends, your friends that know me, and you know I'm there for you. That's the only reason I'm making these videos. Because I want you get these guys out there now. They don't know the ass from the Shanola. They don't, they don't, they have no connection with any of these people. They have they get out there and act like they're experts and don't, they don't have the real deep understanding of what this is all about. You know, and I do. And I'm exporting it to you. <laughs> to be continued. I quit this bitch. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Before you click away, I want you to subscribe, like, comment, hell, even dislike if you want to. At least do something before you get out of here.